Okay, great. Thank you, thank you. Greetings, good night. Thank you for tuning in live. You are now tuned into the vault. This is your host, Trust Christian. Just wanted to say uh, that we have a special guest for you all tonight. It's going to be an awesome episode going over some quality information tonight with a uh, a honored guest, actually. So I just wanted to bring someone quality to the platform. I know that You know, we we talk a lot about trust on this show. We talk a lot about intellectual property, uh, owning nothing, controlling everything. And so uh, this episode, I do my best to bring a quality interview to you all. I've had the pleasure uh, within weeks now to get a chance to know the special guests that I have today on my on the show and um, just really to impart some quality information to you. And this is the individual that created the movies that we so love and have you know really revolutionized the movie industry on how movies are done and created and shown on motion picture um you know not just that but also she is the writer of the books that were created that uh the property was stolen from um in the first place and so uh, a lot of times when you all hear good movies you also hear them having a previous written, uh, I guess you would say, piece of work. And so the individual that I have the honor to interview tonight is Sophia Stewart. And she is a, a humble, um, exciting, um, you know, lively individual that I've had a chance, like I say, to get to know uh, and just really get a chance to build that relationship with. And I really want to uh, bring her to you all to understand some of her background. She does have a quality legal background. Um, when she look to take on when she looked at you know take on the individuals that tried to steal her property or you know stole her property uh, and and used it via copyright infringement she she defended herself in the court case uh, defended her property in the court case as far as the lawsuit she didn't need any lawyers so you know I, I always am excited to have people come from a law perspective and study from a law perspective and be able to uh, move forward in that fashion and so she's that individual that has taken the time to understand the law, um, utilize the law, and not be abused by the law. And very, very important in today's day and age. So I look forward to imparting this information, this woman on you. Um, you know, just it's always so awesome to have a sister, you know, come through and, you know, share this information with the younger brothers and sisters and people in general. I always look forward to sharing information with people that can really help them out in their life to change their life. And so without further ado, the creator of The Matrix and the Terminator, Sophia Stewart. Are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Kristen. Yes, I would like to make a really huge uh, correction. I am the writer, the author, and the creator and owner of The Matrix and Terminator franchises. I am the only source work that was used to adapt uh, these uh, movies into one of the biggest Oscar-winning movies. Award films of Matrix and Terminator. Uh, James Cameron is not the creator and the writer of the Matrix and ter- of the Terminator, and the Wachowski brothers are not the creator of the Matrix. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. So people need to know that it's not just my work. I continued my work, but they adapted the work, and it's the source work, and that's what makes me the creator, the author, by copyright and law. And I won my own lawsuit, meaning uh, damages, because that's what people go to court for, to win damages, not you're going to win your property back or any of that. Right. You already own your property, and you know that because you already know that you got the deed to the house or you own the title to the car, your car certificate. So everybody already knows who owns what. But if you use my car for a joyride or stole it, you owe me damages. Or you went into my house and you you know, went over there and did a, a sit-in or whatever, you, then you know that you have to pay for the damages. So that's what everybody files a lawsuit for or the damages, and that's what I filed my lawsuit was for, the damages. Awesome. I to make that perfectly clear for people. Well, no, I think that that's a very important to clarify, you know, when people say, oh, well, you know, copyright infringement, 
you know, you had a copyright and you still do have a copyright, but they don't understand how to protect your copyrights. And so, um, you know, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to do this interview and we're definitely going to move right in. But is there anything you would like to start out the interview with as well, far as uh, any greetings well, or anything? I want to I wanna clear up something. It, 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 it's not about the copyrights. I had three copyrights. So it wasn't about the copyrights. It's not a copyright issue. It's a criminal copyright issues, meaning that people stole and used intellectual property to make a law, to make billions of dollars. It's a, it's a RICO. It's called a RICO law on RICO enterprise, and the government failed to protect my copyrights because of racism. And this is what the issue is about. It never was about copyrights or people not owning copyrights because it doesn't matter. There's a lot of people who have copyrights and they're still stolen from, and I'm one of those people. But they stole billions of dollars, whereas they might have stole millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars from other people. My case is the largest case in the film history because it was billions of dollars stolen, from probably something like $100 billion for the, for the uh, Matrix and Terminator film franchise. And that's what makes it such a huge case. That is a good point. That's what makes it so phenomenal. If you don't mind me asking, what what made you, what allowed you to have the competence to be able to um, be able to say, I'm going to go into court and I'm actually going to defend the case? Well, nothing. I already had the confidence because I filed the first lawsuit over in California back in the year 2003. Oh, whoa, 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 one second. Here we go. I see I have a problem, actually. So the show is going on, but we actually, let me see. There was a, here we go. One second. Oh, man. It's interesting that that just happened. Um, what, what, what happened? Uh, what that that happened? I know, right? Um, I actually uh, have to cut on the mic because it doesn't say that the mic is cut on right now, but the show is recording. So we're going to go ahead and get this mic going. Cause I thought I had the mic plugged in, but it's not one second. One second. Well, take your time because if the mic is not plugged in, that means it's muted. That means it might be recording, but it's not recording anything. If you can't hear anything, it won't record anything. Right. It's actually get ready to do it right now. So yeah, we're getting ready to go ahead and uh, get this going. Here we go. Logitech. All right, cool. Thank you everybody for being patient. I'm sure you all heard it. This show is going to be recording. Don't worry. I'm sure you are going to hear it. So it, that was good. Uh, it's funny. Technology has a way of uh, saying things to you without saying things. Thank you, the live audience, for tuning in because you always are, are a blessing. I'm sure you all can hear me right now. If you could, just please say yes. I know you said you couldn't hear anything. And we've actually been recording for seven minutes. So I will just upload the uh, the quality episode that I do have. Um, but if you all could just type into the chat and let me know that you can hear me right now, I really would appreciate that. Uh, once again, we were recording the entire time and uh, we're going to move forward. So um, good. They said they can hear it now. So, so Fia, I guess we, we're, we're going to, you know, kind of move forward in it. But thank you all for letting me know that I really do appreciate that YC loss and Garrett, um, Jeremy Garrett, I appreciate that. Um, Sophia is on the line with me. So Sophia was talking about the fact that it's a RICO case and things of that nature. And so I was just asking you, Sophia, what gave you the confidence to go into the courtroom and actually defend the case um, or, or actually sue them um, and sue, you know, such a large name as, as Warner Bros or, you know, James Cameron or the Wachowski brothers? What gave you the confidence to actually do so? Well, I, it had nothing to do with confidence. I, I already had that, you know, because anybody going after anyone, uh, no matter who they are, uh, that's confidence. But I had the knowledge to, to win the court case, and it's a RICO theft. And, of course, criminals are scared of RICO cases. And I went in there and filed a RICO. Well, the judge court ordered it because uh, you, you if, to talk to a judge about the RICO because it's a criminal enterprises. Uh, RICO is Racketeering Influence Cor Corrupt Organization, R-I, you know, C-O, RICO. 
And a lot of people don't understand the repo laws because they were created to, to get these uh, white collar criminals who were stealing millions and billions of dollars. And this is what the law, you know, you, you know about it on a common le level from Al Capone and John Gotti. But anyway, I knew that since the FBI and the DOJ failed to do their jobs on this, they had, they had investigated the case, they had validated the theft, but they got paid off not to prosecute the criminals. So this is why I had to file the RICO myself and try to bring some, some, some balances of justice. And since I had the knowledge of criminal law, it was quite easy for me to go in there and do that and rectify that. And it actually scared the defendants, Warner Brothers, James Cameron, Gail Ann Hurd, Andy and Larry Wachowski, Joe Silvers and Fox. In uh, Hemdale Films, a conduit or a constructive trust or a shale company. It has terrified these people and entities that own these shale companies. So uh, they sent these four law firms to sabotage me, and one of the law firms was a RICO specialist, Dean Webb, which he later on uh, told on them, told me that they had all been paid uh, by one or other some defendants to come in and shut down the RICO case so they wouldn't have to go to jail. Well, Bruce Isaac, their attorney at that time, back in the year uh, April 24th, you know, back in 2000. Uh, in four, um, had called me and said that they couldn't beat the RICO because they had actually stolen the work, which was later validated through the second court case in Utah. Once I entered the evidence in, uh, that validated the theft. And so this is what was, was terrifying them, that they had to go to jail. Because the U.S. Attorney's Office, who actually initiated the uh, criminal aspect to this case back in June the 10th, 1999, had told me that they would prosecute the case. But as soon as they gathered all the evidence with the FBI out there, they like the police, they gather evidence. The U.S. Attorney's Office, like the DA's Office, they prosecute. They had all the evidence to prosecute, and they failed to do that because they had gotten bought, bought and paid off not to put these criminals in jail. And now I, I still found out the reason because of Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who had came over here, probably no doubt a Nazi sale, came over and married an influential woman, Marie Kennedy, or Marie Shriver Kennedy. Uh, she's, a, she's a Kennedy, used her name, the Kennedy name, the Kennedy influence and power uh, to further his acting career and to become a governor of California. And he was the RICO Enterprise. He was the missing link that I did not have, but the FBI, undoubtedly they had it because they interviewed me and they had a dossier on him, a really thick file of the dossier. And they had been investigating him. And I was wondering why are they trying to put Schwarzenegger in jail because, you know, I figured he was an actor. You know, I just, you know, I was thinking maybe like Tom Cruise. You know, Tom Cruise gets 75% of the receipts on the back end on, you know, when he does movies. Mm -hmm. Because usually uh, usually our actors are not involved in the theft of property. They just come in and perform a job. So this is probably why I overlooked it him. But just recently, they're trying to do an old reboot which, again, for the fourth or fifth time, they're trying to do a, a reboot. Uh, I think it's about three, three, it's like three movies or some or four movies that they're trying to reboot. But they failed to miss the whole, uh, whole story uh, behind the Terminator. They never, they never knew what the whole story was about because James Cameron never created the Terminator. So their focus were always on the mother, but the story was never about the mother. The story was about the baby that the mother was going to have. Sarah Connors, the baby, Neo. See, John Connors, J.C., Jesus Christ, grows up to be Neo, one and the same in the Matrix. His past, present, and future time travel. And the story of the Terminator doesn't make any sense without Neo. Good point. They're so focused on the Terminator 
And James Cameron has called him a, a killer robot, <laughs> which is comical because he's a microchip clone cyborg naked without shame. Because in the future, you can't tell the artificial intelligence from a common man. Wrapped in flesh, killed but cannot be killed. And this terminator is time traveling to kill the mother so the baby would be prevented from being born. That's what the whole story was about. It was never about the mother kicking ass or her being the hero of a story. She's not the hero of the story. Neo is. And it's not a Nazi and Jew uh, storyline. It's not any rebellion or resistance. It's a rebellion about the, the, the man versus the machine. About the baby going up against the machines and defeating them in the future. And Dan Cameron is way off the mark. He's talking about the machines has already won. Because you can see people who look, looking using their cell phones. But they ain't got nothing to do with these cell phones. This is comical. When I'm reading his articles, it's like a joke. It's just comedy. It's Saturday Night Live comedy. Because <laughs> so, he, if you wrote The Terminator and The Matrix, then you would know that the machine doesn't win out. The machine at the end does not win. Yeah, those those movies have really cast a vision. They really cast a vision on thought process and things of that nature uh, for people's, you know, mindset towards their vision towards the future. And I always like to point out that you are a visionary, that you had these um, that you had these visions and thoughts. Could you talk about maybe some of your creative process? Um, what you know, and and also once again, when you were going to copyright the work, and when you copyrighted the work, um, could you talk about your creative thought process towards the actual uh, books? Because these are books before they're movies, and then on the back end, it, had, it was book. It was a book and a script before the movie, because you have to have source work to create a movie. Movies are not created out of nothing. Uh, every movie has come from a, a script, a short story, a book somebody's own true life story or blah 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 source work that's what source work is copyrighted source work and i had copyrighted my source work while i was at usc in the 80s 1980 to be exact i was at usc when i wrote the story matrix and terminating they're one story then they're, they're just divided up into two franchises called the terminator and the matrix and so I wrote a metaphysics story that had never been a totally original story because you can't steal ideas. Ideas is a thought. You can't steal somebody's thought. You need something concrete. Concrete means solid, something real, a, a script and a book or, or both in my case. And, of course, I copyrighted it because I'm a paralegal. I was working for a law firm in Beverly Hills at that time while I was at USC, the University of Southern California School that Marcus Allen and, and Ronnie Lott went to because they were my classmates. It's also the school that uh, Anthony Davis, who was a boyfriend of mine during the 80s, and also I was engaged to marry Muhammad Ali during that period of time. Also, because I met Anthony probably in, my, in the late 70s um, when I met him, and he encouraged me to go to USC, and then I later on met Muhammad Ali in 1980, and I was with him from 1980 up until 83. So what I'm saying to you is I already was well-versed in copyright, well-versed in trademark law, lien, and, and court cases, civil, criminal, federal, State. So there was no way, and plus I'm a visionary, just like you were just speaking about, so there just was no way they could win on these fronts because it's about knowledge. It's about wisdom and knowledge. And I'm coming out with the first metaphysical movies, and metaphysical means uh, when you take science, science fiction, and you join it with spirituality, and that's what you would call metaphysics. And we're talking about the Christ or the second coming of the Christ and not the first coming by those authors and the, and the Bible. Matrix is a Latin word for the woman's womb. Matrix is in the King James' Bible. You can Google it. 
mentioned five times in Scripture, three times in Exodus, uh, two times in Numbers, uh, Exodus 34, chapter 19, verse, God said, he who opens up the matrix will come through the woman's womb or his children, three-dimensional children born with souls, and that these children of souls would go up against the soulless ones, which would be the machines. The machines were born soulless. And so this is what the whole story is about, this soulless, microchip, cloned, uh, cyborg wrapped in flesh, looking like man, doesn't even know that he's uh, naked until someone tells him to put some clothes on, is the uh, is coming to kill the baby. The mother is obsolete. Sarah Connor is obsolete. She's obsolete. They, you know, they need to destroy the baby because they've already heard the oracle prophecy that this baby is going to be born. Neo, the one. N-E-O-O-N-E, one and the same, is going to be born that's going to take them out in the future. So the mother is irrelevant other than to carry out the the, the motor random of a, the, the attack, is what the attack is about, is killing the kid. Right. Kevin heard, so the baby will never be born. And James Cameron and all these people who have stolen the Terminator have missed the whole mark of that. They've listened to my interviews, but they have never got what it understood. And if they did, they couldn't use it anyway because it's copyrighted material. And now that I had the second court case over in Utah, uh, there's definitely nothing they can do with that storyline. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, 100%. And could you talk about uh, the liens that you placed on your property and as well with the accountants that you actually paid um, to... I didn't place no liens on my own property. That's that's stupid. Come on, be for real. I placed liens on the defendants, the thieves' property, because of when you uh, when the IRS plays liens, it's because you owe them money. They don't place liens on their own property. They place liens on the perpetrators that owe them money, and that's what you lean up. And you, the lien holder, means you, the owner. It's just like this. And let me give an example. You go in to uh, get your car fixed and you go to this company and they charge you $3,000 and you're not able to pay the $3,000. They're going to lean your car up and they're going to put it, the information in public records that they're the lien holders. And then they're going to turn around and sell your car if they so wish because they are the owner. And you guys are commonly... Uh, known about this for a long time because all, all of America is kind of mortgaged up at some point, whether it's cars, houses, or other properties. And you either are the owner or there's a lien holder on all of this stuff. There's nothing else going on. So it's common knowledge. All you need to do is apply common knowledge to yourself. All right, I, I got that. So somebody wanted to know was it was it was it a mechanics lien? C Holmes wants to know was it a mechanics lien? No, it's a lien, the same lien that the IRS apply on you when you owe them some money. It's the same levies that they put on your bank account. It's the same liens that they put on your house or your car or any property, you know, if you own some land or whatever. It's those same liens that uh, you're very commonly uh, understand and you know about. You've been knowing about it for years. You've been knowing about this for years, and you dealt with it on a personal level because all of you have experienced some liens at some point. If you bought, if ever bought a car in America, it's the same lien right now on the car that you own before you own the car unless you buy the car right, right out. So right. it's... The lien that everybody is, is, is secure in and commonly known and you've already dealt with in your life. Whether you know what it was or not is irrelevant. It has been a part of your life from day one. Okay. So this is getting good. So the, the, you have a lien on, on – now, who do you have an exact lien on, if, if so the audience can be aware? Who do you have a – well, uh, I would ask the lien. I got most of the defendants, well, in fact, all of the defendants leaned up 
but I also have some other people who've been involved in the theft, which are called co-conspirators. Anybody that joins on in a RICO is aiding and abetting. Even if right now you were taping me to go help the opposition, to go help any of these defendants or people who know these defendants, then you would be part of the RICO and you would go to jail and you would serve a maximum sentence uh, as, as they were, even if you were not there in the beginning when they stole the property in 1981 and 86. It doesn't matter. If you come on, Johnny, come lately. Even if you if you do any kind of um, work for them that's going against the copyright, you would definitely... You would definitely be part of the RICO Act. Okay. And a lot of people need to know that. They need to know that if you work any kind of way with these perpetrators or defendants, it, even if your name is Tim Miller, uh, if your name is uh, Zach Penn, and you come in in any kind of form of fashion, you would be part of the RICO on the rise and you would serve the same maximum turn as James Cameron even if you were not there and present 33 years ago when James Cameron and, and, and Schwarzenegger, who used to be governor of Schwarzenegger of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you would still be serving a maximum term because this is federal copyrights. Right. It's not city or state. It's federal. Right. And I think, um, I think but, a lot of people are kind of like thrown off by the seriousness of the the, the the situation and the severity, like you say, by not knowing the law, they're kind of thrown off by like, oh man, is this serious? And how serious is it? You know, I haven't seen anyone get locked up yet and things of that nature. So could you speak to the fact, you know, I know we've had some really great conversations about that, but could you just go into about the fact that the perpetrators always get caught? The, 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 the people that do evil always get hit with the truth and the truth end up prevailing. Could you speak on that? Yeah, because I need to know, tell people this. Listen, you people, you you have been dealing with this for a long time. Al Capone was racketeering and stealing and killing and putting drugs out on for people and killing them with drugs and everything. And they were paying off to the politicians and the commissioner, the, yeah, the police commissioner and others. High-end people were paid so they could stay out of jail, and, and swap, I mean, and uh, uh, and uh, Al Capone went to jail finally because uh, the little CPA who dropped the bomb on him uh, that he didn't pay the taxes, and that's how he ended up going to prison and dying in prison of syphilis. And John Gotti went to prison and he died of uh, cancer. And Bertie Madoff, he went in at 65. He got 150 years, and he had been paying off the years because he was stealing from the very, very rich, and he was stealing millions and billions of dollars on Bertie Madoff. But then his son came out as a witness because they got a whistleblower pro, uh, program too, where they pay out millions of dollars for anyone to uh, just squeal on the other people. That's right. You heard what I said. They got a whistleblower. Whistleblower means that if you tell on somebody, they'll pay you millions and billions of dollars or money, substantial amount of money to squeal on other people. So if you know anything about any government uh, employees or people breaking the law, it's called the whistleblower. You guys Google it and, and be familiar with it. You can get paid money to squeal on your own relatives, friends, and family, whomever, you know, committing a crime, and you know you got some knowledge of it, you can get paid for that. It's called the whistleblower program. Google it, and the government is, is over it. And that's how the government actually find out all the stuff that they do find out. It's through the whistleblower program. And then you'll, you'll remain anonymous also, which is a really good thing. And this is how a lot of people get caught, too, and they're brought to justice. So don't think that you're so big you can't be brought to justice because Whitey Bulger, his brother was a senator who was protecting him. His best friend and grew up with was an FBI director. And they made uh, the government made his brother step down so he could stop protecting him because, yeah, there are senators that take graft and all kinds of stuff, judges, lawyers. 
all kind of people in positions of power that take graft and bribery and money and all kinds of things in favor uh, just to let these uh, criminals operate here in America and abroad internationally. But there is a God, everybody, because they are finally brought to justice. Google the wolves on Wall Street. They went to prison. They were stealing millions of dollars from the common people. That's right. The, en the Enron executive went to jail. And you guys know Martha Stewart. You, you guys are familiar with some of these people going to prison. So crime does not pay. It just catches up with you. You might be old by the time it catches up with you. The four little kids that was uh, little girls that was bombed in Alabama back in the 60s, uh, they caught up with the criminals, the white criminals who had bombed the, you know, racist act. Uh, they, some of them had already gone to, to divine justice. They had died of cancers and car, car accidents and all kinds of bad things. And then there was the other ones. They were old, but they were going to jail and prison. So crime does not pay. Uh, these people have not gotten gotten away with any of this. And, and the fact that they want to do a last Terminator and try to create, again, another franchise, tell you the extent or the extensions of their mind thought on uh, criminal activities and stealing, that they are psycho, or they're social or psychopathic, uh, sociopathics, rather, you know, a sociopathic is a person who has no feelings about a crime they're committing or have committed, and they just want to continue to do the act. The same way like a serial killer. He you knows he's committed some, you know, ingracious act upon society, but he still wants to commit a crime, still wants to kill. That's the way it is with criminals with theft. They have a, a mental problem. And they don't see that they're doing anything wrong. And that's the unnerving part right there, just, the, just what drives the, the, motive, the motivation of the serial killer and these sociopaths, you know, that they want to continue a crime uh, and to, 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 to get money that they have no entitlement to. But you can't even keep the money because you didn't earn the money in the first place. You can only go out there and work and keep the money you earn. You steal something, you didn't earn it, or you got it illegally through drugs, or you got it harming and hurting others. You can't keep it. That's why bank robbers keep robbing a bank till they get killed or they get caught. Uh, same way with uh, serial killers and same way with prostitutes and all kinds of people who are committing, you know, and, and grievous and great, you know, acts in they have no control of their conscious, have no conscious feeling about the act, then the, you know, the result sets in. You get caught or you die of the game because divine justice catches up with you. But you don't get away with anything. And so these people are not getting away. They can't even reap off of they stole so, uh, so much and created so much, but they can't hold on to the money. You know, the, the motivation behind is the greed. And this is why you keep on saying, you know, and it's always that last, the last act that catches you, you know, where the bank robber says, well, we're going to do one more robbery. We all going to make this big score and then we all going to get out of the game. But <laughs> that never happens. Yeah. It never happens. Yeah. Well, that's what, that's what they're trying to do right now with the old grumpy old Terminator where a 61, a 71 year old man, excuse me, Schwarzenegger, fights a 61 year old woman, and want to bring James Cameron back as the producer, and Tim Miller, the one uh, the director that did Deadpool, want to bring him back as the guy, want to well bring him in first time as, as the director for the Terminator new franchise or reboot or whatever they're trying to create, but it, they missed the whole point. I'm sorry I did, but if you try to do the Matrix story and the Terminator story, the real story, well then you know you're gonna be you're gonna be arrested and Rico on a bribe because there is no Sarah Connor story. Story is about Neo, the baby that goes up against the machines in the future and destroys them. That's the whole story. It was never about the mother. The point on the mother was to erase her. So the baby could be erased before he even uh, create history. 
And that's the part that they never, ever got. That's why when you look at Terminator 3, 4, 5, you know, it's not 5 Genesis. Because I got Terminator 5, Reverse of the Machines. They couldn't even use Terminator 5 because it had already been copywritten by me. Which I'm going to come in and explain everything about the Terminators and what their whole purpose was and how, uh, why they are destroyed. So you, you need to listen to me. Oh, yeah. Go back and read all the old articles that Cameron and Tim Miller and uh, Schwarzenegger is a part of it. Schwarzenegger is the main ingredient here. He is the RICO enterprise. He form, he forms the whole grid. He's the big thief and brought in everybody else on the RICO. And there's nothing James Cameron can do as a director, nothing that he can do as a producer to provide some money for a RICO enterprise. And that's what he's going to get charged for. That's where his criminal act, you know, uh, supersedes or proceeds you know, proceeds or supersedes. That's what the whole thing is because they're trying to create a whole nother franchise over another story that is non-existent. It's right. not about Sarah Connor, guys. Well, that's it's what I... About he says about you. And that's what I wanted to, to, to kind of point out to you is that um, when we were talking about the word matrix, you had mentioned that these individuals... Um, they wanted they when they were when you were telling me and and when I even read in the case that they were talking about the word matrix they were trying to um, take ownership of the word matrix and things of that nature when like you said it's a generic word so when we were talking could you relate how what you specifically had the copyright on and and how they infringed upon it <laughs> trying to make the a copyright is the copyright is always on the story nobody can copyright a title dude. Right. The, the copyrights are always on, about the storyline, and that's why they can't use the storyline. The storyline is the theme, is the plot, is the characters, the graphics, and the special effects, and so forth. You can't copyright a title, and they got one sheet of paper in, and they wasn't trying to copyright. They were just trying to basically take ownership of the word matrix. Not realizing that matrix come from the Bible is a generic word, just like cola. You no one can take possession or trademark the word cola because there's the formula Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola, RC Cola, Shasta Cola, and hey, who knows, Applejack Cola, whatever kind of cola you can come up with. You can only copyright the 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 uh, the essence, the source work. Right. Can't copyright a title. It doesn't make any sense. It's not any source work. You can't own one, and and not realizing that the it's, it's biblical. Matrix is a Latin word for the woman's womb. The difference between a man and a woman is this womb. The Andy and Larry with Chelsea is nothing but men. That's all. They will never be a woman. There's no doctor upon the earth anywhere in existence can make a woman out of a man, or vice versa, make a man a woman into a man. It just is impossible because the womb, the woman's womb, the matrix is, is is where we grow babies inside of us, our stargate, our portals into this physical domain. And you need this uh, umbilical cord to feed the baby and you need the womb. There's no doctor that can create an umbilical cord or womb for a man to have a baby or grow a baby inside of him. This is the biggest lie ever perpetrated on the world. They are nothing but me. They're Lily and La and La Lily and Lena in drag. Right. And if they cut off their if they cut off their penises, they're Lily and La Lily and and Lena, uh, androgynous, Frankenstein monsters. Right. Because if no penis, no seeds upon the earth. Because right. men have penises to spread the seeds upon the earth. For those seeds to grow inside of a woman, inside of her stargate, so she can deliver a baby upon the earth. And with that that whole cycle not working, then you're just wasting your time here. You're nothing but a scourge, a plague. Uh, that's what AIDS comes from, a scourge, because the anus is nothing but a sewer to let out the waste in your body. And if somebody sodomizes you, 
They're actually putting the sewer back, the sewer, sewage back into your body. They're actually putting the toxin and the mess back in your body. And this is where E. coli, Ebola comes from, hepatitis and all these other uh, diseases. The claps, they, what they call the claps and all kinds of herpes and all this. It's just putting bacteria back into your body because the anus is where the mess comes out of. And then if you come and you push mess back into the body and in, inside of the penis head, then you're in violations of the, of the body. You are corrupting the shell. You're correct, corrupting your temple that's supposed to be clean and kept holy with water and, I, and I, nutrients I, and vitamins and so forth. I agree with that. Taking showers. So is people important. need to hear. Well, people need to hear this, the truth. Because the Bible speaks of one the scourge upon the earth. And the Bible goes back and it teaches you about Sodom and Gomorrah. Why Sodom and Gomorrah, the city called Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Bible read about it. They were called sodomizing and gunderia. They even tried to have sex with the angels when the angels came looking for a pure soul to save the city. They were still in violation. They were still scourged, plagued. And this is where all these scourges and plagues come because the scourge is, a, is an epidemic, a plague. It's, it's an abomination unto God. It's unholy and unclean. It's an unholy and unclean uh, spirit that embodies man. And no one has ever broken this down to people to straighten them out. And James Cameron, he ain't nothing but a witch and a warlock. That's all he is, a warlock. Of, uh, the witch is a female, and the males are called warlocks. And that's all he is, is a warlock. But I'm using the terminology witch so people can understand. A lot of people in Hollywood are nothing but a big bunch of witches and warlocks. Because he's teaching you demon possession when he stole Avatar. Avatar, the word Avatar is ascending master. Someone who is ascended to a higher level of consciousness and they can use the elements of the earth, the air, the water, and the fire. And he stole it from this story called The Airbender because The Airbender was not the name of the, of, the, of the film. It was really called Avatar and it was a game that the children was playing and James Cameron wanted to use uh, that energy of the name and so he took it, Avatar, and they had to change their movie during the, the advertising of the movie to Airbender. And he got everybody thinking demon possession is taking on a body and calling the body an avatar. Like you go and get a car and you can drive a car. Well, you can take over somebody's body and, and call it an avatar. No, it, that is the wrong terminology. That's called demon possession to go and take anybody's property or covenant anything and covenant another body is demon possession. It's not no word avatar. You're not taking on no avatar because the avatar is an ascending master, a holy spiritual uh, monk or guru who, is, and who have ascended to a higher conscious level. And he's able to do things like Jesus was an avatar, a master who ascended to his light body, Neo, the one. So you people out there that's confused you need to get Avatar out of your out of your mouth because it is not demon possession. What James Cameron is teaching you is demon possession because when you go into the movie Avatar and you see where the soldier takes on the body of another race, they're going there to infiltrate and destroy that race. And that's what demon possession does. Go in there to destroy other things or other people. And it's called demon possession because you're going in like Renaissance to do something evil and despicable undercover. So you people need to wake up out there because all this information, Google it, and you will see I'm speaking the truth. But I'm breaking it down for you so you can get out of these ignorance and wake up to the truth. These people got these hidden agendas and... Schwarzenegger uh, being a Nazi is talking about in Terminator 4. Go back and look at it. It's all about the Nazis and the Jews and the old trains and the mines and the resistance, the French resistance and the bur burnt out buildings and bombing of France and uh, England. 
and and the old Nazi motorcycles and helmets that's in the movie, and some fans walked out of it. They were just, oh man, and and talking about a resistance. There's no resistance. This is not about the resistance. It's about a woman battling a Terminator. This is about the second coming of the Christ, the evolutions of consciousness, man versus the machine. The evolutions of consciousness is shifting your consciousness so you can wake up out of the ignorance and become enlightened so you can go exactly to the light. Light meaning knowledge and wisdom and come out of this ignorance and barbaricism and cavism that these witches and warlocks is putting you in. Yeah. This is why the story was created to wake you up, not to put you to sleep. And that's what this old reboot has been doing, putting you to sleep. So they're asleep. <laughs> they're not enlightened. All right. Well, Bruce George, uh, he's on the live stream here with us, uh, Sophia. He says, stay diligent. He's the founder of the uh, Genius in Common movement. And he uh, thanks you so much for doing your work. And um, C. Holmes wanted to know, was uh, Neo supposed to be black? That's what he wanted to know. Well, yeah, three-fourths of the world was black. And Matrix is the first black and Terminator is the first black science fiction. Because when you go to the white man science fiction, and you go back and look at the white man science fiction, and you, you see why he got he got pissed off about Star Wars when a black man in 2016 was a, had a lead role uh, as one of the characters in Star Wars. He got pissed off because uh, the white man's uh, science fiction has always been lily white. If they had uh, black people in there, one or two black people was all they could afford to put in there because there was no black people in the in the future. That's the way they see the white science fiction. So the the white man, uh, the black man would die out the first uh, 10 minutes of the movie, one or two of them. And they would always cause the problem for the white man because in their illusions in which they created, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Batman, Superman, and of course, Rocky, Rocky with uh, Rocky Balboa beating a black man in a movie, which, you know, is not true in reality because you saw Floyd Mayweather in McGregor's fight. <laughs> and so, so that the white man has always had this white man saving the world complex. So when you look at uh, Matrix, and do not be deceived because even uh, Keanu Reeves, which is uh, Keanu means uh, cool breeze over the mountain, his mom might be white, but his father is black, and you are what your father is. His father is Asian Polynesian, and those are black people. And you guys know this. There's a lot of white skin black people passing for white that are not white in America, and you guys all know this. It has nothing to do with the skin cover because that's just a covering. It's all about the DNA, folks. And if you know that the Terminator was supposed to be been O.J. Simpson and not Schwarzenegger because they all knew what they stole was the first black science fiction. Go get the third eye book and look at the news article. It's telling you back in 1981 that Sophia Stewart, myself, was going to come out with the first black science fiction with black people or people of color because three-fourths of the world are black people. Whether Whatever you call yourself in Rome here on, in America, they got all these people lying because when they go to their own foreign country, they know they're black. Every of them, all of them, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Asians, all of them, they know they're black. They're all the races, the, the, the Spanish people, the Portuguese, all of them, they're black. The, the white people are, that are really white, they're all in these coal areas. And we're talking about Alaska, we're talking about Russia. We're talking about certain key areas where there is no sun to burn you up. Because God was quite clear about the children of the children of the light. He was talking about sunlight that gives us oxygen to oxidize our plants and to give us life versus the children of Eve, talking about Eve, Adam and Eve, the Atom, A T O M and Eve meaning uh, Eve evening, coming from the evening, which is where Cain or chaos comes from. And that's where the lineage comes from, the children of dark. It means the bowels of the earth, not no cave, but the bowels of the earth, where they dwell in darkness. Darkness because the light is going to burn them up, like because the light, sunlight burns up bacteria, it burns up 
um, anything uh, parasites. Because anything that comes and hosts off of another, whether it's stealing their property or their money or their lives, is a parasite. And the sun kills that parasite, and they've been mixing with God's children so they can walk in walk in a day called day walkers. Right. So they can keep chaos going on in the in the light. And because back in the day, they could only keep it in the in the in the night time. That's why you see the old vampire movies that they can only come and kill and do their damages in the dark. And dark means there's a hidden. Your hands are hidden. So this is what this is all about. And you guys need to wake up to the truth. It's not about any skin color. All of these programs are distractions to keep you from seeing the truth because the truth is staring you right in the face. It was never about you not being able to read. It was all about mathematics. The universal language is math. It's all about what you can do as counting and understanding. If you can count, you can create. If you can create, you'll be an architect, an inventor, an engineer, you, you know, a blueprint, a source work. Because it doesn't matter about the little worker ants and the little worker bees following the blueprint. They're not the creators. The creator is the one that creates the blueprints, the source work. And anybody can create and build from the source work, the blueprint. But it doesn't matter if you uh, lie and put your name on a Picasso or Beethoven or Michael Jackson or Prince. You cannot carry out the creative work. It'll come back and slap you in the face every time. But you need to see the truth. You need to wake up to the truth. That only... The composer, the inventor, the creator can continue their work until they leave this earth. And you will see their work over and over and over until they leave. And anybody else is an imitator, a copy, and you see plenty of imitators and you see plenty of copiers, but they're not the real thing. So they don't they don't go anywhere. Because that's what mimicking does. It doesn't go anywhere. Right. Well, let's talk about um, you know, I know that you've written the books, The Third Eye and The Things of That Nature. And, you know, I don't want to ruin any of the books that we've talked about and this the work in general. But could you talk about how you definitely want to um, come to some type of resolution with these individuals that have stolen the work to create uh, for the fans an actual another piece of work, which would be The Matrix 4? Because a lot of people are not aware that the characters really didn't die because most people don't read books. So if they read the books, then they would know what's really going on in the books and know that there is an actual Matrix 4. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, because you keep going to the third eye. The third eye is the beginning of the work. The script in the book is where Matrix and Terminator franchise is coming from. But I continue my work just like Picasso continue to paint in all authors. They always continue their work. And so I'm continuing my work with Matrix 4, the fourth installment of the Matrix trilogy. It's a series now because uh, Matrix 4 has been out and selling around the world since 2010. For seven years, because it's 2017 now, that's seven years. And fans around the world, three to four billion fans around the world, and people are waking up every day and connecting to this work. So if you love the, the Matrix, and you want to continue to work, then go to my website, truthaboutmatrix.com, and get the fourth installment. It's called Matrix Evolution, Cracking the Genetic Code. And for those in foreign countries, you can go to Amazon.com and or Walmart or Barnes & Noble. And if you live in Atlanta, you can go to Medu, M-E-D-U, uh, bookstore and get the physical book. But yes, you can go, you know, and get the book and start reading the book and start to understand if you can love the work to continue the work, well, it's there waiting for you. Because uh, in two and three, since they couldn't do any more of my work, they killed them, them out, supposedly, in three, revolution, matrix revolution. But in four, I said it was Neo and Trinity never died. It was just a dream. That's right, a dream within a dream, just like a wheel within a wheel with these equal. They wake up in the Matrix saga continue. They share each other's dreams because they're soulmates, but they didn't die. You don't, uh, authors and creators don't kill their work. 
and Cameron, you know it's not his work because you don't just give your work and let anybody else interpret it and do whatever they want to do with it and you claim you're going to get it back in 2019. Nothing comes back to you. You either have the copyrights, which are 75 years of ownership, and you can't revert. If after 75 years, you have to go in there and re-up it or sell the copyrights or transfer it to another author. And it would be saying that uh, another uh, owner, excuse me, and it would be saying that uh, in the copyright office. There is nothing to show that Cameron ever wrote or created the Terminator or the Wachowski is creating the Matrix. Nothing. No source work. Not. Or they don't even own a copyright. They have an assignment with a dummy company or a shell company, which is called a constructive trust. It's called a constructive trust, a dummy shell company, because it's holding my property, the script in the book, without a signature. And that's what a RICO enterprise and why it's called a theft. And you guys need to understand this stuff. This is elementary, my dear Watson. It's nothing phenomenal. Stealing is nothing phenomenal. So you said the name of the website is Truth About the Matrix. I'm about to put it in the chat right yeah, now. Yeah, Truth About Matrix. It's Truth About Matrix. dot com or Matrix Terminator. dot com. That's www.matrixterminator.com. dot com. You go to Amazon or Walmart or Barnes and Noble. It's called On Demand, and they will order. We got physical books. I even have eBooks on my website where you won't find them anyplace else, but on my site. And you can get an ebook if you like ebooks. If you got iPad, Kindle, or whatever, or EPUB, or whatever you need, I have it for you. But you just have to specify, and then I can give it to you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Thank you. So I definitely put that that book in the chat so people can look at the uh, book, so they can go to your website, excuse me, in the chat. And uh, I thank you so much for uh, taking the time. Uh, Ewan uh, McCullen. Uh, he said uh, he, he wanted to say shout out to uh, Sophia. I guess he has some type of relationship and says he thanks you for doing the interview. And um, just so much really good support in the chat here right now. I really do appreciate you all for taking the time out of your schedule to listen live to uh, Sophia. And uh, I definitely would be honored if she could come back again um, to really kind of just have more of a, a relaxed conversation. But I really wanted to bring to you all today um, a focus mainly on intellectual property, how this lady has uh, defended her property, um, has made the proper steps to to, to move forward in, in receiving the rewards of her property, and that she knows that the truth will prevail, and that the confidence and the swagger and, and, and what's necessary, the knowledge to actually do so has to be there. And as you all can hear, she has her studies in law. She's made it a point to, to, to be a architect of her world, to be the architect of, of what she, her reality. And she's so impactful in the world today because of the vision that she's had. And so I definitely would love to follow this up with a part two to kind of see where she sees the world going, um, you know, at one point, because I know we're getting close to the top of the hour and they usually keep the, the shows under an hour for, for listening purposes. So we're going to see if we can do another episode with her um, for sure, maybe even Sunday and see if we can get her to come back and talk about more of even a metaphysical aspect of where she sees the world, because me and her have some really good conversations um, outside of the show here. And I've, I appreciate, you know, everything that she brings to the table, um, you know, and, and what is it that, you know, she talks about as far as the vision and, and having the foresight to see um, where people are currently in the world um, and, and where they're going if they don't make certain changes and get rid of certain programs. And, you know, when she talks about, you know, creating the movie, The Matrix, that, as you can see, there were programs being uploaded into people. And she talks about the deprogramming process and deprogramming is making you think that you can't do anything outside of the program. So that's why it's so important to be outside of the matrix. So I love her story. Bruce George says he wants to let you know that he'll be reaching out to you uh, to get a genius in common video um, from you, from her on, on um, their website. So um, Bruce George wanted to reach out and say that. So I thank you so much, uh, Bruce, for tuning in live and making that statement. Um, and, you know, Bruce definitely uh, reach out to uh, Sophia uh, through the website. Um, you know, one thing I want to point out before we leave here, Sophia has a telephone number on her website that you all can get in contact with her. This is one of the few rich people that I've ever met that uh, genius in common. I'm, I'm familiar. Uh, thank you, Bruce, that you can 
Oh, genius is common. Excuse me about that, George. Genius is common. So excuse me about that. Thank you for the correction. Um, she's one of the few people that I know that is so humble that at least allow fans to actually contact her through her website and talk to her over the phone. And I mean, how humbling is that to know that, you know, someone has wrote such a quality body of work, um, created such a body, body of work, be able to be so reachable and in touch. And so I just really wanted to, you know, share my thanks and my appreciation to you, Sophia, for the relationship that we've been able to establish, the conversation that we have. Uh, it's always been a joy. It's always been a pleasure, um, you know, to really be able to connect with someone that, you know, sometimes celebrities, quote unquote, can seem so out of reach and you're so reachable, um, you know, still at your level in the game and, and, and people wonder, well, you know, how is it that this individual is so reachable and, and stay so humble? And, you know, I, I appreciate the interview here because, you know, I never would have scripted this. I'm one of those people that always have like blessings come to me out of nowhere. You were definitely a blessing that came out of nowhere, but a blessing on time for sure. And uh, I just appreciate that. And I wanted to know if we could definitely get you live to say you would come back again and be willing to speak to the people. Yes, I will. And thank you guys for having me. And I definitely will. And I want all people to know they can have these consultations with me. They get a book. And I got another uh, book I mentioned, you know, mentioned, the 2017 Matrix trivia book, uh, movie trivia book, film trivia that you don't know about the Matrix and Terminator. It's an e-book, and you guys should get that book, too. It's uh, very phenomenal because I have four books now. And uh, my fourth book I'm going to put out. But I got three books out. So you guys get the book and call me up. Like you said, there's a number on my website. You can Google my website. If you don't understand how fast we were giving out the website, you just Google Sophia Stewart or go on Amazon and you can look in the book cover and there's the website there. But when you Google Sophia Stewart, that's S-O-P-H-I-A-S-T-E-W-A-R-T, like Stewart, Jimmy Stewart, and Sophia, like the movie actress Sophia you you can pull up my website, go on there and get the book and, and give me a call. Let's talk. Yeah, that's Let's crazy. Talk. You know, they get to talk to a billion. They get to talk to someone that really has done some and powerful work. And, you know, those movies have really been inspirational, too. I think sometimes people think it's all about the fighting scenes, which I love the action scenes. And, and, and that's what I love about the book that, you know, starting to read the book myself. I've never read a script before because I'm not an actor, but reading the script, has been awesome because or reading the book has made me feel like an actor you know like man if I could get a part in her movie that would be awesome but it it just it it really puts you in the scene you know and and that's what's so awesome is she wrote the books inside of a script form for the scenes so you really get you get a great visual it's something that a child could read and so I just want to promote to you I'll really go to the website and support her um, you know, the greatest way to support is to actually contribute and, um, you know, share, uh, you know, your energy uh, through free sources of finance and, and, and getting a book. And she's put out her energy by creating such a quality work to develop us as a people. Like she said, it's a, it's a metaphysical book. It's spiritual and it's science. So it's not just one thing. It's something that, you know, we ultimately can, can carry us over into the future um, as far as our thought process. And she's a thought leader. You know, she's changed the game in the way movies have been done. And, and I think that that's very critical and we all need to realize that and uh, kind of embody that when we move forward in our work, but at least take from the fact that she's able to cast a vision and it actually be displayed in real life, in real time and letting you know that you all have the same exact power. So I just want to thank you, Sophia, for coming on live. Is there any uh, parting words that you would like to say before we uh, close out the episode? I, I'm just loving it. And thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for listening and, Please get in touch with me and uh, look look for the next episode of this because it's not over. It's just the beginning. Thank you so much, Sophia. Thank you all for tuning in live. I appreciate you all. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Trust Christian. Own nothing. Control everything. Go to uh, the email if you would like to email me, hfrn, period, vault at gmail.com. Uh, you can reach out on the uh, Facebook page. Uh, at Trust Christian, or you can uh, feel free to reach out to the vault. Uh, but once again, the email is hfrn period vault at gmail.com. Look forward to hearing from you all and talk to you soon. Peace and love.